Hey everyone, welcome back. Today on the bench, we're going to take a look at my latest eBay acquisition, a Keithley 195A digital multimeter. Found this listed on eBay for a whopping $75. Pretty good deal, I think, considering I've paid far more than that for some handheld multimeters in the past. So for $75, bucks, I figured I'm not going to pass it up, and I snatched it up. And it arrived, oh, let's see week week or so ago and it was in uh, it was in pretty good condition uh, I had a couple labels on it that I took off gave it a good clean a little bit of a uh, little bit of IPA on the surface and all just to get some sticker residue off and overall I think it's in pretty nice shape uh, according to this uh, cow sticker on the front or asset tag this is listed for Al Allied Bendix Aerospace. So, guessing it probably got some pretty serious use at some point in its life. If we look around the back, uh, we can see we've got uh, rear four wire terminals, uh, including for measuring amperage. Uh, we've got GPIB port. So we can hook this up to a computer or other things via GPIB. And it tells us that the model 1950 DC amps option is not installed. This is a lie. Uh, upon taking it and opening it up, I was very pleased to find that that option is installed. So these meters, if you bought them without that option, would just do volts and ohms. And that was it. It wouldn't do any current. It wouldn't do any. Um, and it wouldn't do any AC measurement. But with that option installed, uh, this meter now measures the full complement that was designed to do. So it will do AC DC volts, AC DC current, and it will do ohms. And temperature. It's a little label down here that you can do some temperature readings with it if you have the right adapter and probe. Kind of don't care about temperature measurements with it. It's a five and a half digit bench multimeter and its most outstanding feature to me is the very nice big bright LED display on it which is a big change from the display on my 3478A multimeters that I have. If I pull one over here I have the one that I showed in my previous video that I picked up from eBay. If we look uh, we can see that the two meters are, uh, they're the same width, they're the same depth. The Keithley is taller by about mm, an inch-ish, something like that. But functionality-wise, they're really pretty much the same. They're both five and a half digit meters. They both do DC volts, AC volts. They do two wire and four wire resistance measurement. On the HP, I have to select two or four wire to uh, use that. Uh, the Keithley will auto detect. If I have four wire probes in, it will use them. If I only have two wire probes, that's what it defaults to. Uh, I, will, it, I can do current and I can do DC current or I can do AC current. Uh, both meters auto range. Or they can be, or they can manual range, and I've got settings to manually range up and down if I want on them. Both meters will do an auto zero function. They both I can adjust the resolution. On this one, hitting the button uh, loses one digit of resolution. On here, I can choose whether I want it to be three and a half, four and a half, or five and a half. Both meters will manually trigger, so we can do internal trigger or manual trigger. And both meters will let me set the GPIB address. This one does it through a program that can be recalled. And both meters can be, can be calibrated. I was pleasant, pleasantly surprised to find that uh, the 195 is really in pretty good, pretty good calibration spec. It's pretty close to this new HP that I picked up within a, a you know a few few digits of the 3478A that I keep on my bench all the time. 
So let's just, we'll just look at a couple, couple values quick just to see how it's doing. I've got my, my leads here hooked up to my HP 6205C power supply, which will, which has a, uh, a current limit of 0.3 amps. Uh, so that will come up. It usually comes up about 0 0.358, 357, somewhere in that range. So if we set this to amps, if we take a look, usually comes up 3576, 3575. The HP. Three five seven six, three five seven seven. So that looks good. I've also picked up one of these little eighty five eighty four Chinese voltage references. Uh, they're surprisingly good. I have to say, I was uh, pleasantly surprised with picking one of these up. So on the ten volt range. My HP reads 10.00.69 and the Keithley 10.00.34 and 10.00.34 is a, closer to the HP that I keep on my bench. If we go to the 2.5 volts we get 2.5.00.1 And 2.50152. I don't need anything down to five digits for what I do and play around with. So from an accuracy standpoint, it's five volts. This meter's in very good shape. So I'm not gonna sit here and run tons of values through it. I think as a general rule, watching people measure things on a meter is not particularly exciting. What I will do though is I, I will pop the top off of it and let us take a look inside. So I had put this, I had put this new HP on my bench with the old HP, um, but since getting the Keithley and this very, very sexy big LED display on it, I have changed my mind and I'm gonna put the Keithley on my bench instead. Um, I like having a display that's very easy to read. So getting inside here is pretty easy. Two screws. Top lifts off. And we are in. So if we look, here's that 1950 module installed. We can see it has a cable that goes right to the right to the main board. And I'm not gonna go through and point at everything, but uh, looking at the chips for date codes, I can see that we have, looks like 1986 is the, uh, is the vintage of this. Uh, this capacitor, this capacitor looks a little funky. Um, yeah, it's a little bulging, it's a little warm. So it's probably due for a replacement. What is that? That is 10,000 microfarads. Is there a voltage on it? 10,000 microfarads, 25 watts. I don't see a voltage rating on it. You know, I hadn't noticed that the first time I looked at it. But I do have a manual for it, so we can certainly, I think it's 25 volts. If it does, yeah, I think we will certainly replace that one. I do have some 10,000 microfarad caps, uh, 35 volt ones also. 
but we'll leave that for we'll leave that for another time. But other than that one dodgy cap there, looks good. It's it's running nice. Not too hot inside. But yeah. I don't know how I missed that when I first looked in there, but that is not um, or is that just the plastic that's pulled up on it? Um, actually, it's not bulging. Cap might be okay. I'll probably replace it anyway. But anywho, uh, you know, that's the inside of it. Uh, like most high-end equipment from this era, it uh, it's really a lovely thing to uh to take a look at uh the date code on the motherboard says copyright 1982 so that is the i guess the board revision is whatever they is the 1982 design but like i said the chips in here all have date codes of of 1986 i'm trying to see what the processor is 6802 okay yeah, so this is running off a 6802 microprocessor. And uh, I'm not going to take all this other stuff out. Mainly because it's working and I don't really want to sit there and, and muck it up. Um, I think it's always, a, it's always a win when you can get a piece of equipment off eBay. For what I consider to be a really good price. And... Uh, not have to go in and do anything to it. So like I said, I cleaned up the uh, I cleaned up the case, cleaned up the front panel, and that was it. Did not need to go in and try and diagnose anything. So, sorry HP but you're being replaced. It'll be good to have a backup for the 3478. Like I said, when I got my, uh, my 3478 that I have on the bench right now, I actually got a calibration certificate with it that showed everything with it, how everything was within tolerances and whatnot. So that's still sort of my benchmark meter for, for you know, what I go against. I don't see a need to really tweak the values in this to match it exactly with that. Like I said, two digits after the decimal point is probably more accuracy than I need for the stuff that I fool around with. But it's always cool to have a nice piece of professional equipment to put on your bench, and this looks this looks good up there. So that's it. Just a quick look at the uh, quick look at the Keithley. I have a couple other Keithley meters. I have a 178A, which is a smaller four and a half digit meter. It's got a 168A that is an auto ranging meter that I do not have out on the bench. And I have a 197, which is the same as the 197A, just that the 197A will do 20 amp measurements. And I have that sitting on the shelf as well. So I don't need that many multi that many multimeters on the bench. So I think three more than covers everything that I'm doing. Anyway, that's it. Quick video. Just wanted to show off, show off the new eBay find. Like I said, $75. Even if it wasn't working, it was kind of hard to pass it up. But I lucked out again. Nice condition. Didn't have to recalibrate anything. Didn't have to fix anything. Working perfectly. All right, that's it. Questions, comments, leave them down below. Like and subscribe if you feel so inclined. And I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.